Hey everybody, welcome back to This Sucks. This is my uh, cancer vlog, video, diary, whatever. And I promised you a little bit of history about what I've been through, what our family has been through throughout my whole cancer diagnosis. And um, that has led to today, uh, which uh, just to your I still don't have a whole lot more information. I'm hoping uh, it is now uh, Wednesday, almost noon. Um, hopefully I will hear something today from my doctor. He has a big meeting. Um, but let's travel a little bit back in time. Uh, 2017. Um, and actually it probably started 2016. I had a mole. And I mean, moles are pretty normal. I mean, you know, people have them all, um, you know, all over, freckles, different things. Usually they're not a problem at all. Um, and I had one that was on my neck and I had it forever. I mean, as long as I can remember. And it was just this round spot um, and it was flat. Well, probably fall or winter of 2016, it started to grow a little bit. Um, it was still a circle, which is usually a good sign, um, but it started to kind of pop out. And like enough that I could feel it, you could see it. And I was like, uh, well, that's not normal. But I kept putting off going to the doctor. Never a good idea. Um, and so by the time I got into my doctor, uh, they took a look at it and they're like, well, you know, we're not really an expert on uh, skin stuff. So we need to refer you over to a dermatologist and a dermatologist specializes in skin issues, things like that. So I got my referral. But uh, usually with specialists, you have a wait list. And so I had to wait another maybe two, three months before I got in to see the dermatologist. Get in to see the dermatologist. And I was actually super, super lucky. She was really, really nice. Uh, she took a look at it and she goes, you know, I studied at John Hopkins for years. Um, I studied skin cancer and melanoma and things like this. And yeah, this doesn't look um, like super normal, but we're gonna get rid of it. We're gonna go ahead and cut it off. Uh, we're gonna send it to the labs. We're gonna test it out, but I think everything's gonna be fine. Um, and she goes, well, you know, you'll hear back uh, probably in about a week. Um, and, and we'll touch base and then, you know, we'll just, you know, occasionally have you come in and we'll do skin checks and make sure things look good. Awesome. Um, well, that appointment was on a Monday and I believe on Tuesday, I was walking into the house after work and my phone rang and it showed the number to the doctor's office. I tried not to freak out. Um, I was like, okay, maybe it's like a reminder about something, but you, when, when you're told that you're not going to hear anything for a week, when the phone rings and you hear that it's your doctor and it's only been two days, I knew pretty quick that the news wasn't going to be, um, and sure enough, it wasn't, um, the, uh, Reports that came back from the lab showed that it was indeed melanoma, which is the most aggressive form of skin cancer. Um, but at least, you know, one bonus, it was, you know, potentially caught pretty early, was the hope. Um, but to be on the safe side, we had to start doing a number of tests. So the first thing we had to do was um, I had to go in for a PET scan. So a lot of people have heard of CAT scan. Well, a PET scan is kind of similar. Um, it is called a, it's a, a positron emissions tomography scan. And essentially what you do, you go in to, um, you know, to this office and they inject for way oversimplifying. It's like, um, like a sugar concentrate, but there's, it's like radioactive. So, Hey, you know, anyone know like how to become a superhero? I might be on my way. We'll see. Um, so anyway, they inject this stuff and, and really um, cancer cells like sugar. They like things like that. So what they do is they inject it into your bloodstream and then they let you sit for about 45 minutes and then you get brought back and you get put on this, um, on this metal tray essentially and you are uh, lifted in into an MRI machine or not an MRI, a CAT scan machine, which is essentially like a, a, a tube. Um, and you have to stay super, super still. And then you just go in and out and in and out and in and out. And essentially it's just scanning your body. And what it's looking for is if 
there's any um, detectable levels of cancer cells, the hope is that that injection that you got is going to clamp onto them and it's gonna light up kind of like a, like a glow stick on the scan when um, the radiologist reads it. For anyone who has any medical background, I know this is like way oversimplification and I am by no means a medical doctor. So this is my own interpretation of what this is. I've actually never gotten to see a picture of any of my scans. So, um, so we did that, nothing showed up. Good things. But um, what they determined was that the mole was big enough and it was deep enough that there was the possibility that some of the cancer cells from the mole may have gotten into a lymph node. So then we had to very quickly, and it didn't have to be quickly, but they were amazing and got me in in like a week, um, had to do a, um, it was just an outpatient surgery, which means I go in that day and I leave the same day. And it was called a sentinel lymph node biopsy. So essentially uh, what they did is I go in and I get more uh, radioactive stuff injected into me. Um, so essentially they um, brought me in before the surgery and at the site of where the mole was, they gave me a shot of similar stuff. It really burns by the way. Um, and then I got brought over to the surgery suite and uh, they knocked me out. And then what I'm picturing in my head was that the surgeon has a black light and just like ran it over my neck. Um, I know that's not what it is, but essentially uh, what that shows you or what that showed them is where the, um, where anything in this part of my body, where that mole was, where which lymph nodes it would drain to. And lymph nodes are a giant part of your of your body, of your immune system. They have um, they they help you fight infection. If you go to the doctor and you're like, oh, I have a cold, one of the first things your doctor is going to do is they kind of feel around your neck. They're looking for swollen lymph nodes, which can tell you that you have an infection. So that's what they're looking for when they go in for surgery. Is they're trying to see where is that spot draining to. And then they removed, I think it was three lymph nodes that uh, were that spot and they sent it to the lab. The lab's job then is to basically dissect those and see if there's any cancer cells in. So we get done with that, I get to go home. Um, I have like a nice little, you know, scar uh, right in that area. And, um, and they're like, again, we'll, we'll talk to you in about a week. They're like, honestly, the chances that um, we're gonna find anything are pretty slim. Um, and we're gonna get you in touch with an oncologist to figure out what's gonna happen next. Like if anything is found or if it's not, cool. Um, so again, whew, story time with Pop Mom. Um, so a few days pass, um, it's that, that Basically, I think it's the end of that first week. Uh, I think I had surgery on Tuesday. Um, I was well enough that I actually got to bring my mom to an eye doctor appointment, and I think it was Friday. And while I'm waiting for her to be done with her eye doctor appointment, guess what happens? My phone rings, and it's the surgeon, and they found cancer cells in those lymph nodes. So that 20% uh, or whatever chance, yeah, well, that happened. Um, and so essentially what that means, he goes, my surgery schedule is full, but one of my colleagues, uh, she is available and we can get you in next week. We need to go in and we're going to remove as many lymph nodes as we can from that area. Um, just to be on the safe side, we're going to test them all. Um, and we're going to move on from there. And I said, sign me up. Um, so, uh, that's what we did. Uh, very next week I went back to the hospital went back uh, into surgery. And um, I mean, it's it's very, very well healed now, but you guys can kind of see like scar, like all the way on both sides. So literally they removed, um, I think it was over a hundred lymph nodes after all was said and done. They sent those all to a pathology to test and see. All of them came back fine. No other cancer cells were found in any of them. It was only in those, I think, one or two that were removed initially. So great news, awesome. Nothing showing up on scans uh, anywhere else. Um, and so then I finally, I get to meet with the, um, the oncologist and an oncologist helps treat cancer and does all of that. So for those of you who are not familiar with that term, meet with him and um, get 
ready to start actual cancer treatment, not chemotherapy. I was luckily skin cancer and melanoma is one that um, there's some newer cancer treatments available and one of them is called immunotherapy. Um, it can still be kind of nasty, but not nearly like what you see in the movies or if you have any family members who have gone through chemotherapy or radiation. It's nothing like that. I didn't lose my hair. Um, my biggest side effect was a lot of like tummy issues, um, uh, some you know vomiting, diarrhea, things like that, like being really dehydrated, um, unfortunately, uh, for a while. Um, the goal for that was um, essentially, I think I went every couple of weeks for the first three months and then it was gonna um, space out the number of treatments that I had and I think it was like every 12 weeks or I can't even remember at this point. Um, but by the time we got through that first summer of treatments, um, I was having enough side effects and it was impacting me enough that I mean I was having to go in and get IVs of just fluids because I was so dehydrated. Um, so the doctor decided that um, it was probably best at that point to stop the treatment and uh, just keep an eye on things, which they would have done regardless. So every uh, six months or so, I would go in for another scan, either a CAT scan or a PET scan, um, so that they can keep an eye on things. So all of that happened mm. after two years. So it started in 2017. By 2019, I finally got a piece of paper that said my cancer was in remission. And remission essentially means, it doesn't mean it's gone, but it means um, it's asleep. Like think of like sleeping volcano type. Um, awesome, absolutely amazing. Um, and uh, life moves on and you know, we can continue life and I get pregnant with baby, with Pog baby. And, um, we go to Disneyland for the first time as a family. It was awesome. We have the holidays, all of those kind of things. Brayden is super excited to be a big brother. Um, and then COVID hits. Yay! Um, so now um, I'm pregnant. Um, COVID is hitting. Uh, it's likely that schools are about to shut down. Um, I work at a 911 center and we're not really sure what that all means. And then all of a sudden, I, and, and that's all of a sudden, but, um, but I start feeling this uh, bump on my neck. And I, I knew they probably hadn't gotten rid of all of the lymph nodes, but I was definitely concerned. Um, I was like, maybe, I, maybe it's that I have a cold, and so maybe there's like one lymph node left, and it's just swollen. So I let it sit for not very long. It was only like a week or so, and it hadn't gotten smaller. In fact, it had gotten bigger. Um, I tried contacting my normal doctor, trying not to freak out. Um, and essentially they told me, oh, well, yeah, that's kind of normal. Um, you probably just have a cold. Uh, let's check back in a month. And I go, no, -uh, no, I, I can't, I can't do that. Um, and I think I emailed back two or three times and I got the exact same answer. And I was like, well, okay, well, I'm just going to go over your head and, um, and I'm going to go to my oncologist and, f and, you know, for, you know, in all fairness, um, they're not special, you know, a, a general, uh, a practitioner, your family doctor is not a specialist in cancer and things. And I probably shouldn't have put that on them to begin with. I probably immediately should have just gone to my oncologist. Um, but I called them up and he called me back the same day and said, okay, thank you for letting me know. Uh, we're, uh, I know that you're pregnant, so um, we're gonna get you in for an ultrasound. And an ultrasound essentially uses like sound waves to get a picture inside. Um, it's like the same technology that's used when you're pregnant um, and they can look inside and see a picture of the baby, same thing. So now pregnant me, I'm getting an ultrasound, but not for the baby, um, I'm getting it on my neck. And they do see something that um, they're concerned about. And as we uh, continue and we keep waiting because with COVID, there was a lot of delays and things. Um, so they're like, okay, now we need to get you in for a biopsy. And essentially what a biopsy is, is they go in and they like cut a piece off of whatever is the concern and they send it to the lab and the lab says yes or no. So I was gonna go back in for another ultrasound so they could guide it. So there was one, there was like a nurse with an ultrasound machine and then the doctor with this big honking needle um, and he pulled out pieces of, um, of this spot. And as I'm waiting and waiting, um, and I luckily 
with COVID um, and there were so many unknowns because I was pregnant, because there was a possibility of cancer, I was actually able to take some time off of work and be home with the family um, in that fear of what, what if I got COVID and on top of all of this. So it's very, very lucky uh, in that. Oh, um, and so I wait to get results and I wait and I'm figuring it's probably gonna take a little longer than normal because of COVID and so many things are backed up. Um, and now we're almost to two years to the day that I was first diagnosed with cancer. 